Greetings. My name is Tina Sirsted, and I'm a proud member of the League of Women Voters, Dakota County. And I would like to welcome you to the Dakota County Commissioner Districts 4 and 6 Candidate Forum this evening. As always at our events, we want to remind you that League of Women Voters, Dakota County is a nonpartisan political organization that encourages informed participation in government, works to increase understanding of major public policy issues, and influences policies through education and advocacy. We never endorse parties or candidates. And now, please let me introduce our moderator, Tim Lash. Tim is a trained moderator and an active member of the league. We're honored and excited to have Tim moderating our uh, forum tonight. Thank you, Tina. Good evening. And on behalf of the League of Women Voters, Dakota County, I would like to welcome you to the Dakota County Commissioner's District's four and six candidate forum. Thank you for, to the candidates for attending tonight. You will note that we only have three of our four candidates present. Unfortunately, Seema Madali was unable to make the forum. Ms. Madali has submitted an opening statement and I, as the moderator, will read it after the other candidates have given their opening statements. We would also like to thank the Apple Valley Rosemount Farmington Community TV for their willingness to record and broadcast this event. Because this election includes more than the Apple Valley Rosemount Farmington service area, we are also appreciative of the other community TV stations who will be broadcasting this forum in their service areas. The League of Women Voters does not support or oppose a political party or candidate for office. League of Women Voters Dakota County provides unbiased candidate and issue information that is used by Minnesota voters regardless of their political beliefs. Sponsorship of this forum is a public service providing you with an opportunity to hear the candidates discuss important issues face to face. The views expressed here are those of the candidates and not those of the League of Women Voters. Sponsorship of this forum is not an endorsement by the League of any particular candidate. As a reminder, this forum is for the election of Dakota County Commissioners in Districts 4 and 6. District 4 includes Rosemount, Coates, and parts of Egan and Invergrove Heights. District 6 includes Lakeville. If you need to check your district, please go to co.dakota.mn.us slash government slash board. We will start the candidate forum with opening statements and end with closing statements. Each candidate will be given two minutes for their opening statement and two minutes for their closing statement. Opening statements will begin with the candidate present from District 4, then proceed to candidates from District 6 in alphabetical order, and end with the moderator reading the opening statement of candidate Madali. Closing statements will be in reverse alphabetical order, beginning with District 6 and then proceeding to District 4. The order of answering questions will be rotated between districts and candidates in each district. Candidates will have one and a half minutes or 90 seconds to respond to the questions. We ask the candidates to respect these time limits. Please note our timekeeper who has a yellow 15 second sign. And there is also a stop sign that indicates you should conclude your sentence so we can move on to the next candidate. Many of the questions for this evening were submitted to the League by email. They were reviewed by League members and edited for clarity. In addition, this committee developed some questions based on topics of interest they identified in the community. Because of time constraints, we are not able to ask all questions submitted. This forum will conclude in one hour. Let's begin with opening statements. The order for opening statements will be Bill Drosty, Mary Liz Holmberg, 
Mike Robley, and I as the moderator for Seema Madali. Bill? First of all, I'd like to say thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum. I'm Bill Droste, current mayor of Rosemount, serving my 20th year. Previously, I worked 28 years in the communications industry, and during that time, I also served seven and a half years on the Rosemount Planning Commission and did some youth coaching when our children were younger. During the last uh, 19 years as mayor, I've worked with Dakota County on many issues, for example, transportation, environmental issues, uh, public safety, public health, libraries, parks and trails, and housing, whether it was workforce housing or senior housing. I'll say Dakota County is a very well-managed county, especially when you look at tax rate and debt. And I'd say that was off, uh, just shown by a survey that was just completed this spring where the public strongly supports the uh, government, the policies of uh, Dakota County. But I'd say there's three things, uh, concerns looking forward. First of all, uh, if you look out next 18 years, Dakota County will be adding about 80,000 people. And we must have transportation networks that are scalable and able to handle that known growth. Secondly, health and human services, um, they're renowned, but we must do more on mental health issues within the county. And I'd also say with fentanyl, opioids, and meth, we also must do more to educate our youth on the dangers. And the third item, item is the cost of housing is getting prohibitive that many be workers, especially and first time home buyers, they cannot afford to live in Dakota County where they work. Thank you. Mary Liz. Thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, the hosting of the forum. Mayor Drasty, this is your home turf here tonight. Welcome. And uh, we're grateful also for the work of the league and all the work it took to put the forum together. Uh, I actually have been a longtime Lakeville resident since 1968. My parents still live in the home that I grew up in, had four siblings, went to Lakeville schools, and my parents did foster care in our home. After uh, college, uh, purchased a home back in Lakeville and um, have been volunteering and serving in various roles in the community. I started on the Planning Commission in 1989 and since 1995 have been an elected official in Lakeville, serving three years on the City Council, 16 years in the State Legislature, and uh, nearly eight years as a county commissioner. While as a state representative, I served as chair of transportation, civil law, and ways and means. And more recently, as a county commissioner, I have led a number of working groups, uh, one related to housing, uh, uh, homeless issues, shelter, and um, also worked very diligently to get Dakota County out of the County Transit Improvement Board where the county was paying tens of millions of dollars into a regional board and getting very little in return. Uh, we are also are working on a mental health uh, group that I have recently been assigned to as well. And it's been a true honor and privilege to serve the residents of Lakeville and quite frankly, with the redistricting, two precincts in Lakeville are actually going to District 4, and I will miss them. Mike. Hi, I'm Mike Robley. Thank you for inviting me tonight. I appreciate this very much, the opportunity to let the people know a little bit more about me. I have worked 30 years in the corporate world, and in that environment, I've learned a variety of skills in terms of collaboration, working with people, and really listening. <laughs> In the last few years, I've been a small business owner uh, in this area, serving the Southern Twin Cities. In that opportunity, I was very much responsible for the financial aspect and kind of communicating about it. And I learned a lot about really small business and the backbone 
uh, of the economy and, and how it supports the local environment very much. The reason that I'm running is that I feel that people should be involved in their community. For me, it's about community service. Uh, so at this point in my life, I feel it's the right time that I need to give back to the community, and that's the primary reason that's driving me to run for county commissioner. In looking at that position, I really want to be a voice of the people. That is my number one agenda, is to really focus on being the voice of the people. I want to create hope for the future, and in hope, think about housing and how we create affordable housing, safe housing, those types of things for our community. How do we create opportunity, an opportunity to earn a good living, an opportunity to live in a community where you feel safe and that you can enjoy many variety of things. Um, the P would be prosperous, and that's economic growth. As, as any community grows, we need to make sure that the economy and the county and, as, and everything is prosperous. And the last part, the E, is educational. It's not only the primary education, but education of for recreational purposes, for just extending your learning capabilities and those types of things. So I'm asking for the vote of the people, knowing that I will be the voice of the people. Thank you. And in Ms. Medalla's absence, I will read her opening statement. Hello, everyone. My name is Seema Medali and I am running for Dakota County Commissioner in District 4. I am a community citizen, not a politician, and subscribe to the party of common sense. I am an optimist who believes in the goodness of my fellow citizens, and objectivity is my lens. I reflect the voice of the average citizen and will work to make sure that everyone is heard. I work as an emergency room physician at the VA hospital in Minneapolis, and I've been a resident of Dakota County for nearly two decades. I have an educational and professional background that combines healthcare with business and finance. I understand the issues of mental health, substance dependence, public safety, housing, food insecurity, and healthcare beyond the pandemic. My work with veterans provides a unique perspective that is necessary for understanding the needs of this specific population. My vision for Dakota County is community progress that is defined by the ability to think creatively and act swiftly while making choices that preserve inclusivity for all citizens. I hope to promote the use of technology to enhance safe safety and mental well-being, preserve simplicity by being stewards of the environment, remain fiscally sensible to ensure affordability and job security, and nurture a sense of belonging by promoting community engagement. I may not have all the answers to all the issues, but I'm willing to listen, collaborate, and problem solve to make our community better for all of us now and in the future. I hope to earn your trust and your vote in this upcoming general election on November 8th. Thank you, candidates. Now let us proceed to questions. The response order for the first question is Mary Liz, Mike, followed by Bill. And the first question is, as a Dakota County Commissioner, what one area would you like to see receive more attention from the commissioners? Mary Liz. I think the area that we continue to struggle with and spend a lot of energy and dollars is around housing and uh, the reality is is that a lot of issues around housing uh, stability get into the public safety and mental health realm so we um, in the last couple of years have done the Cahill place where for families homeless families to go we have committed over uh, 600 thousand a year in providing services. We also pivoted from senior housing to do housing for low-income singles. Uh, we built one bedroom and studios in West St. Paul, but the pandemic forced a lot of our most uh, needy and challenging individuals into hotels. It's not a sustainable model, and we need to continue to do everything we can to provide the appropriate supports to get to people to a stable place in both housing 
and employment and mental health in order, them, in order for them to move forward and be able to um, support themselves. And it it's, takes a lot of different people from different arenas working on that effort. Thank you. Mike. The area that I would like to see the county commissioners focus on is education. When I think of education, it's much broader than the everyday primary education. It's education of people for job-based skills. It's education of people for substance abuse awareness, for recreational purposes. I think there's a lot of learning opportunities that can be created for people and will benefit them in the long term uh, from that perspective. When you think about the job market that's out there today, people with more skills and um, abilities, you know, the more we can educate people around getting them into the workforce and adding value, it will certainly help out the economy in this general area. So education to me would be the number one area that I would recommend the commissioners focus on. Thank you. Bill? Um, I would say the public health uh, component, which also includes the mental health, uh, today, the resources um, within our cities or police departments being dispatched on many of the mental health issues, we have to figure that issue out. Now, we did a study or a trial a couple of years ago, and we're beginning to uh, separate some of those calls and dispatch them to the professionals in that area. But we still have to look at the whole issue around um, people that are struggling and the safety nets. Commissioner uh, Mary Liz Holberg indicated sometimes it is the housing stability and job, but again, it comes back to that healthy environments that we have, these safety nets out there. Uh, helping people in need. Thank you. All right. The response order for the second question is Bill, followed by Mike, followed by Mary Liz. And the second question is, how would you ensure that county residents have an opportunity to be heard at board, committee, workshop, and advisory committee meetings? Bill. Um, <clears throat> Not being familiar with their current process, I always think uh, having an open forum at the beginning of the meeting allows residents a set time to come in and speak. Uh, whether it's a work session or a public meeting, I also think through technology, we should be able to look at ways that you really don't have to be at a particular building and should be able to go online and submit questions and interact with uh, commissioners. How that would be eventually for formed, um, I don't have the correct answer. It could be maybe a half hour in front of a meeting, real time, where commissioners would respond. But uh, I think there's many ways, but one thing I'm a strong component I always think public officials must be, be able to be accessible to the public at many different levels. Thank you. Mike? The, the, when I look at it, you know, at, when I told people that I was running for county commissioner, a lot of people are unfamiliar with what county government does and their responsibilities. So to me, it would be one, just trying to uh, work with the people to get more education around what you know, county government does and to try and get them more involved. So when it comes to the actual meeting, uh, you know, get more involvement from them. I think some of the uh, lack may be from not understanding fully what county government does. Um, so if we can engage them more in what the activities are of county government, ask them to please, you know, get involved in it. And I agree that, you know, as a, as a commissioner, it's my responsibility to get out, try and listen to the people, make myself accessible, uh, listen to you know what people's concerns are, try and drill down in what some of the issues in their everyday life are, and see how I can help them with those issues. Uh, and with you know with everything that we have going on in the in the world today in terms of ways to reach people that you know there's tons of technology in terms of text, emails, those types of things. So making myself 
accessible not only in person but on other platforms to make sure that I'm bringing their voice forward. Thank you. Mary Liz. So um, specific to county board meetings, we do have an open forum and post pandemic, we have also uh, kept the Zoom function so that individuals can sign up to participate by Zoom and address the board uh, during those forums. Um, so that, that would be specific to the county meetings, but in addition, uh, residents can sign up for listservs to be notified of all public meetings. And we've really expanded our efforts to hold community meetings uh, when we are doing road projects or uh, greenway projects so that we go into the actual neighborhoods and hold these meetings in the local schools or park buildings and invite the residents of those particular areas to come in and look at all the plans. We have the engineers there. And so we, hope, we try and get that communication started way before the decision is made at a board meeting. All right, thank you. So the response order for the third question is Mary Liz, followed by Mike, followed by Bill. And the third question is, water quality, wildlife habitat, and natural areas are important to residents' quality of life. What is the role of the county in assuring that natural resource issues are addressed and their quality maintained? Mary Liz. Thank you. So I think there's like seven different agencies and state uh, uh, government and federal government that have some jurisdiction over water in Minnesota. Um, so it can at times be uh, somewhat complicated, but the Dakota County uh, did pass a voter-approved referendum a number of years ago, uh, set aside uh, lots of acres of uh, natural habitat. Um, we also are participating. We have some water quality issues um, in the rural area with nitrates, and well, so we are investing in studies, um, help for our farmers in uh, mitigating application of uh, chemicals. And then we work with the Soil and Water Conservation District. I think the county is in three different watersheds. Most of Lakeville is in the Vermilion River watershed. So the county partners with the cities in those um, watersheds for projects, one of the most um, exciting things about water is recently we have a program to partner with homeowner association to evaluate their sprinkler systems so they're not wasting water and watering the lawns and it has saved homeowner associations thousands of dollars in water bills as a result. Thank you. Mike? I actually live on Crystal Lake, uh, which is in Dakota County, and I'm on the Crystal Lake Improvement Association. So when I look at that, I, I, I agree with what Mary Liz said in terms of there's many entities that are in, involved. You, you have the state of Minnesota, you have the city, you have the county, uh, you have local groups that are trying to do the right thing to maintain water quality. When I look specifically at the county, uh, in my experience, some of the things that the county is doing is they will offer grants, matching grants. So like with the Crystal Lake Improvement Association, if we have a make an application that will do something to improve the water quality, we can get a matching grant from the county uh, for those. So in, in my mind, the county's role is to help with that facilitation. It is quite a complex process given all of the entities that are involved, but it's staying engaged with that process and doing what they can to help foster the, the natural resource and the improvement of water quality and working with them. So it's staying engaged with the local communities and the state and those people, and then doing these things like the, the grant programs. Those are great. It allows people who are very well connected with the uh, particular body of water to focus on things that will do great things for their area. Thank you. Bill. Um, this is one area. Um, had some experience working with the county and I, I'd say they do a very good job. 
older communities where we've redeveloped old sites. Uh, the county is the one that has a record of abandoned wells. Often uh, you have to uh, spend quite a bit of time and money to find the old well and plug those uh, wells so that it doesn't create problems later on down the road. Our septic systems throughout the county, also they do a very good job. Uh, when property is redeveloped or sold, it must be uh, certified to meet state standards. So the county and that way and uh, natural resources, we're working with the county right now and just uh, approved it last night an 80-acre parcel of pristine forest wetland uh, that was identified over 30 years ago to try to uh, conserve it. And they are, were partnering with the county to put it in a conservation easement. So very complex issue. We have a lot of rural area in uh, the county also. And it was mentioned the nitrates and farm chemicals. Now technology has made a lot of improvements so you do not over apply but it's a very complex issue but I got to give the county credit they are involved at many many levels and do a good job. Thank you. For the fourth question the response order is Bill, Mike, and then Mary Liz. And the fourth question is uh, as a bit of background for our listeners, the Metropolitan Council is the regional policy-making body, planning agency, and provider of essential services for the nine Twin Cities metropolitan counties, representing 55% of Minnesota's population. How would you describe Dakota County's relationship with the Metropolitan Council? What changes, if any, would you like to see in that relationship? Bill. Uh, personally, um, I'm not uh, fully informed here where the current uh, county board is with the Metropolitan Council as uh, it changes over the years. Uh, I will say uh, it seems to be, especially every year, uh, an issue legislatively that um, uh, counties and cities, we have an adverse relationship. Now, uh, personally, I think if the Met Council were elected positions, some of that conflict would go away. But I do agree the efficiency of a Metropolitan Council, especially when you look at our wastewater treatment systems, it is an effective system and across the country if you want to compare our wastewater uh, or sewer systems, it's very efficient and cost effective. However, the MEC Council's much broader than that, um, but I do think that if they were elected positions, it would be much more compatible with working with counties. Thank you. Mike. I, I don't have specific knowledge uh, in terms of the relationship with Dakota County and the Met Council. W what I can tell you is that, you know, from what I see, it, it's to make sure that we're fully engaged with the Met Council. It's a much bigger organization. All the counties in the metro area are involved. We want to make sure that we're fostering a good relationship with the council and all of the other counties working together. You know, it's really working together that are going to help um, facilitate situations where all of us win. So. From my perspective, it's just, you know, working on a really good, solid relationship with the Met Council, making sure that we're doing the things that we need to do to build relationships and move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Liz. So I could spend like an hour just on this question, and of course I can't and won't. Um, but the more, most recently I chaired Governor Walz's Blue Ribbon Commission for reform of the Met Council in 2020. Uh, what I see is the fundamental problem with the Met Council is that it's appointed by the governor and does not reflect the totality of the values and goals of the seven county metro area as a whole and it creates lots of conflict and changes from administration to administration. They do some things very well, wastewater. Um, I've always said that there's an inherent conflict in being the planners and then also approving the plans. Um, 
the collar counties have had a somewhat adversarial relationship with the Met Council because there's a lot of focus of investment within the 494, 694 corridor. For example, when you look at the growth in the city of Lakeville, and then when they distribute the transportation dollars, there's a general goal to not expand the transportation road system. And it's, they tell us how many new residents and houses we need to take in order to meet the planning situation, but then don't provide the money for the infrastructure to support that growth. Thank you. The response order for the fifth question is Mary Liz, Mike, and Bill. And the fifth question is, what recommendations would you make to improve public transportation in Dakota County? Mary Liz. Another uh, complex question. Uh, we have done a number of pilots um, in the transit area, and um, that's challenging. I think that uh, given where we're going um, with autonomous vehicles, we're seeing really high success and cost effectiveness with dial -a ride type of services. Dakota County was the first county in the country that worked with Lyft to provide transportation for the disability community. It's been wildly successful and should be extended to the senior community as well. The, as far as roads, Dakota County it has one quarter of the lane miles in the whole state of Minnesota that are major arterials. So the burden on Dakota County for the transportation system is very heavy and we need to work to get more state funding to support that. The example of that is there is no east-west state highway from Highway 13 in Burnsville all the way down to Northfield. And so all of those east-west county roads are serving as major arterials without the, where other counties have state roads serving those needs. So we always need more money, but as a member of the Lakeville City Council, we had a 50-year transportation plan, so good planning can also save you money as well. Thank you. Mike. When I, when I look at this question, you know, we live in a very mobile society, so it is, you know, Mary Liz mentioned partnering with Lyft, so it's, it's more of building on those aspects of, of mobile transportation versus mass, mass transportation. So how do we inject more of that into the ability so people don't have to own a car specifically or they can rely on knowing that someone will come and, you know, pick them up and take them where they want to go on that kind of model, similar to, you know, what cabs were years ago, but we live in a much different society today. So how do we foster more of that in our community? Uh, when we look at the overall roads, um, you know, I, I talked to a resident who talked about, uh, you know, speed on a particular road. So it's, it's really about improving the safety um, as, as we look at the, the county roads in the, in the, in the area that I'm in. Um, it's trying to, you know, manage all the traffic. You know, Lakeville's a huge growing area. They're adding people. Uh, at a rapid pace. So how do we make sure that we have the right infrastructure in place and the roads available uh, to support that and that people are traveling safe when they choose uh, to use those avenues to drive? Thank you. Bill. Um, public uh, transportation, I will agree, should be improved. Um, but technology and COVID, uh, many things have changed over the last two years, especially when you look at our system, uh, especially I'll use MVTA, which serves uh, a large chunk of Dakota County and Scott County. 80% of the rides were express rides into Minneapolis and St. Paul. That day has changed uh, in the last two years when you look at, for example, Target or Thomson Reuters. So the dial-a-ride type services, uh, uh, Plymouth and the West Metro started that uh, about four or five years ago, became very effective. And I think uh, MBTA now is also rolling out types of, that type of service. We're also, in my view, 
should be looking at circulator type routes that continue through the South Metro, taking people to medical uh, appointments at, or uh, key areas, uh, maybe on certain days. Um, it is something that we're going to have to step back and look forward again, and with the knowledge that we have, I'd also say Dakota County adding 80,000 people working with the cities, we could create nodes together that would make it more efficient. Thank you. Thank you. The response order for the sixth question is Bill, Mike, and Mary Liz. Question number six. Are there changes to Dakota County's election process that you think should be made? If yes, what are they? If no, why not? Bill. Um, this is one area I'm, uh, I know the local area, city government, where people go and vote, but the machines are the county component. Uh, first of all, I would say we should make sure that we have up-to-date machines. I know uh, there's a conflict on the age and software, et cetera. But the other element, I would say, on the county side, make sure we have the robust, secure networks also that we're able to handle the data when it's transmitted on short time periods. Um, other than that, uh, process is basically out at the city level where people go and vote in their precincts. Um, election judges are so key in that process and um, what I've seen over the years, um, we're fortunate that we have an engaged citizenry and volunteers and we're able to have a sufficient number of judges and transparencies at our local precincts. But again, the equipment comes from the county. I'd just say make sure it's up to date and, and efficient and make sure that it's accurate also. Thank you. Mike. So when I think about the election process, you know, I, I don't know that it's, that there's anything particularly wrong with it. Yes, we may need to update some equipment and all that, but if you think about the election process in general, uh, it's how do we become more nimble, more secure, uh, making sure that all of those things are falling into place as the overall election process changes. So my recommendation would be that, you know, in working with the county is to make sure that we're working with the cities and everyone through the election process to making sure that we're adapting to the changes that we're seeing in the election process. There's more mail-in votes, those types of things. There's questions about security at various levels. Just making sure that all of that is addressed as it changes uh, and making sure that we have a, a solid process going forward. Thank you. Mary Liz. So the election uh, process in the county is largely governed by federal and state law and we administer the elections. Um, most of the cities in Dakota County do their own elections. The county does the townships and a handful of small cities. As far as changes to the election process that are within the realm of Dakota County. I think we can always do better with training, information, transparency. Uh, recently, we um, changed our procedure to reflect the state uh, change in state law that required election judges to process absentee ballots. That was a request by citizens in the community that we responded to. And I think that we are always looking for uh, improvements in procedures and training. The reality is, is that sometimes there are mistakes. It is run by humans. And we do everything we do, can to limit those uh, uh, sometimes mistakes or challenges and rectify them. But the county's ability to change election process is extremely limited. Thank you. The response order for the seventh question is Mary Liz, Mike, and Bill. And the seventh question is, 
Do you believe Dakota County has enough affordable housing options? If not, how would you propose increasing those options as county commissioner? Mary Liz. Dakota County, just like virtually the rest of the entire country, does not have enough affordable housing options. And recent inflation in valuation on a na nationwide basis is making this problem even worse. We, like I mentioned before, have invested in uh, housing for singles, um, supportive housing for families. We do senior housing. We, at the Community Development Authority, we administer tax credits for affordable housing projects that are spread across the entire county. We look to every opportunity we can take to do that and in fact are also looking at using some of the, um, the federal uh, COVID dollars to look at doing some additional housing. But given the disparity between income and cost of housing, this is not just a matter of building more units. We have a terrible, terrible mismatch between people's avail ability to earn and their ability to have affordable or attainable housing options. Thank you. Mike. I would agree with Mary Liz that I feel that uh, in Dakota County we need to do more to develop housing for the uh, other economic situations that we face. As we look at the overall housing market, just the cost of materials has dramatically increased, which has pushed up the cost of homes beyond belief. If you look at a large portion of the homes that are being built in Lakeville, for example, um, you know, they're pretty high dollar homes. So when we look at the opportunity for, um, you know, income levels of people, not everyone can afford those houses. So we need to work on ways where we're um, working more with, if it's partnering with, you know, the government in terms of getting more funds available, looking at builders and, and trying to partner with them to incentivize them to build more lower cost housing, but really creating a, a, a match between the economic ability of people to afford houses and the houses that are available in the county. So in my mind, it's finding ways that you can develop relationships uh, that will certainly support the possibility of the full spectrum of, of housing availability in the county. Thank you. Bill. The answer to the first question, no, we do not have enough affordable housing as stated. It's an issue across the country and everywhere in the state, even out state. Um, very complex issue. I would say right up front that we as county, city, state, and private sector need to work on this issue together and not uh, conflicting uh, against each other. But uh, especially the cost in the last three years, double digit uh, value increases. It's great if you own a home, but especially those trying to get into the market or first time buyers, it's becoming extremely uh, expensive to own a home. The one thing I'd say, especially at a city level, county level, various programs, is to maintain your older existing stock is number one to uh, keep that affordability available, especially when you look at housing costs for new housing. But I'd also say there's uh, just a broad, broad spectrum of you, grants and various programs that I think if we leveraged our money, even some revolving loans that would work and you could leverage that money going forward. But again, I'd say the most important thing is we need to work together as all government entities. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. This brings us to closing statements. Candidates will have two minutes and the response order is Mike, Mary Liz, and Bill. Mike. First, I would like to once again thank you for this opportunity tonight. I would like to also thank all the people that will be voting in the general election for the consideration of your vote. I, I take that very seriously. 
Uh, when I say that I want to be the voice of the people, I truly want to be the voice of the people. And uh, know that you can count on me. I will try to be as accessible as possible. And I will truly try to be an advocate for what you feel is important and what you needs to, needs to happen at the county level. My goal in all of this is really, you know, to build a better tomorrow. You know, the future is always bright, and there are certain economic pressures and things that are happening on this country right now as we, as we speak. Um, but I want to be that person that's creating hope for the future, and know that the, um, you know, that Dakota County is a, is a place where you can live and enjoy, uh, you know, your family and all of those types of things. You can earn a good living. You can find affordable housing. Those types of things to build a better community. So once again, I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight, and I appreciate the consideration of people voting for me for commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Liz. Again, thank you to everybody that worked hard to put uh, the forum together. Um, it's been a real honor and privilege to serve the residents and businesses of Lakeville over the years. Um, the county, uh, I think, is doing a good job. We recently have sent out our newsletter, and this year we took a survey where 97% of the respondents said the park were good or excellent. 95 had the same impression of our libraries. We scored, uh, we ranked first among peer counties nationally in economic health, managing tax dollars, quality of libraries, providing information to residents, and acting in the best interest of the community. Some new things on the horizon and in October, the county will be opening up one of two same-day driver's license facilities at the Lakeville DMV, where individuals will be able to go in and walk out same day with their driver's license. So we continue to innovate. Um, again, uh, real pleasure to and honor to represent the community of Lakeville that I'm so proud of. There's so much community involvement. I've had over 35 years with the Chamber of Commerce and volunteered in very many uh, community uh, events and uh, was part of the Friends of the Library before we had a library, was on the initial board for the Art Center development in downtown Lakeville. But most, um, the best part about my uh, years of service is all the people in Lakeville and all the help that they give, whether it's with youth organizations or community organizations, Lakeville is an outstanding place to live, and it's because of all the people that are involved in making it that way, so thank you. Thank you. Bill. Again, I'd like to say thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting this, and also thank you to the citizens for their interest in this forum. Dakota County has tremendous opportunities as we look to the future. I mentioned earlier, uh, projected to grow 80,000 people in the next 18 years by 2040. People move here because they love this area. We're a unique, unique county. Uh, as part of the metro area, we have a large river to the north and a large river on the east side besides all the abundant farm fields and unique areas. And people move here because partially it's schools, parks, trails, libraries, but they also feel it's a safe place to raise families. And if elected, I'll commit that I will work on all these areas and make sure that we don't deteriorate in any way and keep growing as a strong, safe county. I'll also say since District 4 is a new district, um, that if I'm elected commissioner, I will continue and I am learning what's important in all the neighborhoods, whether it's in Egan, Invergrove Heights, Lakeville, Empire Township, or Rosemount. It's a very large area and unique to uh, pieces of various cities, and there are unique issues in each neighborhood. Um, I will say again, uh, it's a great place. Um, 
has great opportunity looking to the future. I'd ask for your vote on November 8th, and again, thank you. Thank you. League of Women Voters Dakota County would like to thank everyone for participating in our forum. We especially would like to thank our candidates for being part of the democratic process by running for office and for being willing to serve our community. The League of Women Voters also researches issues important to our members and to the health of our communities. If you are interested in finding out more about what we do and how you can also make a difference, please visit, visit us at lwvdakotacounty.org. You can find more information about voting and candidates at mnvotes.org and vote411. Again, thanks for viewing and remember to vote by November 8th. Thank you.